What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Waters. Welcome to the Left Metal. It's time for yet another edition of the Mail. That's right. Time for the Mail. This edition of the Mail is brought to you by my good friend Steve, our Harmless Rebel. Uh, I'm sure if you know my channel, you know his channel. Steve's been in the vinyl community for as long as I have, and uh, he sent me this box. It's been literally sitting here for a couple weeks. Because I went on vacation for a week and it got here right before vacation, but I was so slammed from work to, that I had to get done before vacation I didn't have time to open it. And then I got back from vacation and of course I still got slammed and didn't have time to record a video to open it. And I wanted to do a live opening of this. I didn't want to just open it and look at it and then show stuff. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Here's the box. I did open it. I cracked it open. So we're going to get right into it. On the very top there is some bubble wrap. And then it feels like a couple cassettes and maybe a couple CDs. Yep. Right on. Galactic Cowboys. I'm a big fan of Galactic Cowboys. Uh, this is an autograph. Looks like Ben Higgins signed this one. I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm kind of friends with Monty Colvin online as well, so I might see if I can send this to him and get him to sign it as well. That'd be kind of cool, because I don't know that Galactic Cowboys are going to be a tour anytime soon. But in any case, this is their second album, 1990, 91, somewhere in that 92 maybe. Uh, kind of a heavier version of King's X. I... I, I love this band, and I have since their first album, so very cool. Um, thank you, Steve. And then the other CD. Oh, it's a Japanese pressing of Aerosmith's Night in the Ruts. And I doubt there's any bonus tracks. Sometimes Japanese persons have bonus tracks, but uh, this one does not. But there's the center, or the, the spread, and I'm sure it's got the... Uh, the Japanese text on the inside if I can just get this thing out of here without ripping it apart so there's the the, the center spread and then here's the bio biography and the Japanese uh, lyrics and everything else so very cool Aerosmith Night in the Ruts the a lot of people think this is the last, well, I guess it is the last album they recorded with Joe Perry, but he didn't actually play on the whole album. Jimmy Crespo, who t who did the tour for this album, and then, of course, recorded on Rock and Hard Place. Uh, I played on this one as well, so I should probably pull the sticker off so you can see the cover. There you go. Aerosmith, Rock and Hard Place. Everyone knows I'm a huge Aerosmith fan, and anything Aerosmith is welcome my collection. So there is a couple cassettes in here. Let's see. So first cassette. Oh, right on. Ted Nugent and the Amboy Dukes. This is... Um, Marriage on the Rocks, Rock Bottom. And I was trying to see what year this one was pressed, but I don't see a, a different year on here. But anyhow, this is, you know, post solo Nugent, but at this point it pretty much was solo Nugent anyhow. So uh, as you can see, his name is the biggest thing on there. So, <laughs> And then the other cassette is, I know what this one is because I think he told me. Yes, this is the Metallica uh, live at um, uh, live at Festival Hall in Japan, 1986. Uh, and it looks like you know your typical uh, 80s tape trader bootleg kind of thing, but it is an official release. Uh, it did it made it look like it's on purpose, which is kind of cool. I like it. It's in the it's got the stickers on it. it looks like it's all handwritten, but of course it's not as printed. There's nothing on the inside of the, although they did make it look like an original, you know, they've got the lines on the inside just like on the outside, so they purposely printed all that stuff. Kind of cool. Haven't heard this one yet. Uh, I don't know um, much about it other than um, it was released and it's pretty much already selling for $20, $30, $40 online, $50 I've seen uh, it's selling for depending on, the, you know, where you're getting it from. Okay, there is some vinyl in here as well. A couple of stiffeners on the top. I actually just got back from, when I say I got back from vacation, I actually spent a couple days of my vacation with Steve Harmless Rebel. We hit up a few record stores. Um, we, we actually did the metal round table from his, his man cave. So. All right, so first of all, we got uh, Sweet Comfort Band. This is, hold on tight. I'm not sure what year this is. I'm thinking it's early 80s. Let's see. I don't see a year anywhere on here. And I'm not 
familiar enough with this band to, to know without 1979, so this is actually uh, late 70s. So basically, uh, classic rock, you know. Um, this band actually has, uh, let's see, I remember the Brian Duncan in it. The Brian Duncan became a pretty successful solo artist in the, in the later 80s and into the 90s. So, Sweet Comfort Band. Uh, I can't tell what this is. I can't get it out of the box. All right. Box is empty. So we've got a bootleg. Megadeth, live at San Paulo, Brazil, 1995. Big fan of Megadeth. Let's see what the track listing is on here. Skin of My Teeth, Wake Up Dead, Angry Again, In My Darkest Hour, Train of Consequences, Symphony of Destruction, Peace Sells, But Who's Buying, Holy Wars, Punishment Due, and Anarchy in the UK. And of course, it's got the classic, you know, most people consider this the classic Megadeth lineup with uh, Marty Friedman, Dave Ellison, and Nick Menza. Nick Menza, who, has, of course, has passed away just a couple of years ago. So, oh, This one I knew was coming, and I just forgot. Um, but this is a still-sealed repressing of ZZ Top's first album. Just one that never, ever comes around. I never see used copies of this. And I have a, a, the CD version, but the CD version, it's... Uh, I think they remixed it and they changed the drum sound on it. This one, is, I've always wanted the original pressing because it's got that original bluesy, just, you know, organic sound. It's like, I don't know why, but when they repressed some of the CDs, they wanted to make them all sound like... The, you know, ZZ Top did in the 80s, and that's not what we want. We want this, the original sound, so nothing wrong with remastering and, you know, bringing out the sound, making it wider, making the bottom end more, making the top, whatever, but to remix and change the drum sound, that kind of irritates me, but in any case, and one more, this is Sweet Comfort Band, Cutting Edge. So the second one from Sweet Comfort Band, and this one is 1982. So there you go. That's my package from uh, Harmless Rebel. Steve, check out his channel. I'll leave a link below. Appreciate y'all watching. Uh, leave a message below. Let me know what you think of any of these. And that's it. God bless. Stay strong.